Totally translates. And that's the Burning Man vibe I was talking about. It's got that energy. There you <laughs> go. Michael Pollock. <laughs> yeah. Flavor. Oh, Jason Pollock. Oh. Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock. Thank you. <laughs> Michael My, Jason oh, you know, and Jackson Michael, Pollock. Michael, Michael, Michael you know, Pollock. DJ Pollock. My, I'm Coy Jondro here with Nerdist. How are we doing today, folks? Nerdist! Nerdist! Nerdist. Yeah. Yeah. Very excited to be with y'all today in that suit. I said outside, immaculate. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. I try. Now, I try. this is a movie <laughs> where... There, I'm, I'm sorry, no, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie where we have uh, justice being double-sided, right? We've got someone believing that people deserve to die and other people thinking we got to save them at all costs. Where would each of your characters fall on that spectrum? Justice Society side or Black Adam side? Oh, Black Adam side. I think I would be on Black Adam yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. cleanly? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Now, as the fellow son of a, a badass mom, I love your dynamic with your kid in this movie. That bond was incredible. How did you form that offset to build up to that? Well, as a group, you know, as a cast, we all hung out anyway. So it's like we really did um, get to know each other outside of set, not just because that was what our um, our characters needed from one another, but then we just also really liked each other. But I think it was before, right before we started shooting, I had a little thing at my place where you came over, yeah, Bodie yeah. came over, and his yeah. parents came over. They were playing catch in the backyard. And that's yeah. right. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And and yeah, it was just you know I'm a mom myself, so it's it's not a hard thing for me to sort of tap into to be able to create you know like intimacy in that sense with someone who's playing my child, mm -hmm. you know. So and especially now that I have a 13 year old, they're just creatures onto themselves. Yes. So it's like I can now have that under my belt too, how Wolfie. to do that, you know? <laughs> I know, Wolfie. Um, yeah, so no, it was beautiful. We really all did become like a tight family. Yeah, they'd come over, swim in my house. It was fun, the kids trying to drown me. It was great, we're was really a real family. Living you know life. I mean? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's a nephew-uncle uh, relationship without them trying to kill you? It's the impending months? doom keeps yeah, you on your toes. Exactly. <laughs> keeps you on your toes. No, you've got a great karaoke sequence in this film that I really <laughs> enjoy. Oh, it's I, the best. I appreciate it very much. What would your go-to stuck in a van song be, though? Oh, man, that's a good question. <laughs> like I Muhammad's go-to. Yeah, yeah, yours yeah, yeah, as yeah. an individual. Like, yeah. What do you rock out to in those moments? That's Life, that's what all the people say. You're right ah! behind April, shot down in May. But I know I'm gonna mean that ah! too. When I'm back on top, back on top in June. I say that's life. That's probably one of my I like the classic. And he and he hates hates singing. Oh, you can tell. He hates it. It's like yeah, it's yeah. like pulling his teeth trying to get him to sing. You know what it is? Three verses. It's like that song really resonates with our, you know, probably both of it's us true, for it's sure. True. It's yeah. The ups and downs of being in this business and just life in general just yeah. takes you on this roller coaster ride, and I, I really love that song a lot. Hell yeah, I love yeah. that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is a world where superheroes are pretty well established. It doesn't seem new, it doesn't seem novel. If we were to live in that world, what would your first precaution be, and how do you feel like the world would change if people had powers for you? If we, if we were yeah. to live in a world where superheroes were just like day to day, day, we're established. Yeah, that's hilarious. Your first precautionary measure or and how would that change your day to day? You know what yes, I mean? Like, would nobody would be different. picking on each other. <laughs> um, oh, man, that's I think day to day would be like real casual, I guess. It would just take all the fun out of it if everybody had superpowers. <laughs> it's true. It would take the uniqueness right out of everything. It just wouldn't even be that big of a deal. No. It the second be. part of the question like is. Like precautionary that if I measures, had... like how would you adjust to, like, okay. you know, because if, if people are around there flying, like, you know. Yeah, just right. flying just around. Just flying around. As all someone who nerdist, this is what I think That's about. That's a really right, good right, right, I was right. like, I've never thought about what are the precautions out there. <laughs> Do I have superpowers too? Or no, everybody I know. Does I'm, like I'm assuming you're day to day civilians. So, oh, still. Uh, oh, we're yeah, civilians. You're, you're in a situation. I would never go outside or just make best friends with the most powerful one. That's right. That's that's probably that's a good, smart. It would change, like, to a prison dynamic. Yeah. I was yes, say, exactly. like, find biggest the guy biggest in the room. Guy. Like, yeah. hey, Make buddy, sure we find uh, that guy. <laughs> I, you know, my commissary is really full of money. You want some coffee or something? You know, like, I'd find some way to be best friends with him. Probably Kareem would make some contraption for the most, po you know, the most powerful superhero. That's what we're doing. Now, Aldis talked a lot about his phone call from The Rock when he found out he was in Black yeah. Adam. What was your, I'm in this, I have to adjust to it, who'd you call first? What was that moment like? Oh, man. I got mad. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 my, my story was as you know when I auditioned for this, it was pre-pandemic, and then the world shut down, and then about a month into it, my managers called me and said, you know, you got this role in this movie called Black Adam with Dwayne Johnson, and I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, what Dwayne Johnson? Like who? What? Which Dwayne Johnson? And they're like, is there more than one Dwayne Johnson? I'm like, I don't know, but I know you're not talking about it's The ridiculous. Rock. <laughs> like I know you're not Couldn't talking about that, that one. Ridiculous. And and then yeah, so I was I was I was angry because I thought they were messing with me. But I still don't I still can't understand. You know yeah. what I mean? Honestly, it's like 
I never, I still can't quite understand what this is and being here. Like it's not anything I feel like I would ever get used to. I was supposed to be filming my show so I couldn't do the movie so I passed on it. Then I pushed my show because of COVID. I was like, oh no, I couldn't tell the movie. My replacement wasn't working out. I get a call, I was supposed to be moving out of this place. Uh, I was rewriting my series. They told me, congratulations, the second time you've been offered uh, Black Adam. I said, they said, can you come tomorrow? I was like, I will leave tonight. Uh, if I need to, I called my mother. It was just like a beautiful, beautiful moment where I was like at my ultimate low and creativity can, can be so grueling when you're writing your own series. And I was just really, really low and just in a second just changed my life. How we doing today, guys? What up, Corey? Good. I am so excited to talk about this movie because this has been on the agenda for a long time. And diving into it, I love the, the visual elements of your characters, the expressive mask, the Burning Man colors. There was so much <laughs> visual that I loved. What was that like on set? Did you do mocap? And how much did that physicality inform your mental performance? Ooh, go on. Mm. That's I, mean, I, I did mocap yeah, for sure, yeah. performance capture. That was a lot of, of my character. And I did not have any color when I was doing that. It was all like a gray suit with dots and dots on the face and the little camera. Um, but that was insanely fun. Although Q's, Q's costume was just as colorful in person. Mm. Oh yeah. Right, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, mine was like insane. I, I used, well, you did mocap. I was kind of rigged up and spun at various like rates. And also we did that. And then we also put me in like a lollipop rig and the lollipop rig can move any direction. And so I was just kind of spinning and turning and just like twisting and moving. So it was incredible. Well, also keeping like the most zen. <laughs> yeah, I was. It, no, it's like a testament. I'm like, wow, it came out good. Because the whole time I thought I was like cross-eyed and looking at like, I don't even know what. I like that you found peace in a lollipop rig. Not an easy thing to do. Oh yeah, for sure. Now you talked about at San Diego, the bond between the two of you and how important that was on set. How did you guys form that? And also did that cause like mischief between takes? <laughs> I mean, look, I, I mean, if I may, like the bond is is between all of us. Yeah, facts. Set. But, but Q and I specifically, from the chemistry read, we, I mean, the call from Jama was not, hey, so which one did you think? It was like, so it's Q, right? <laughs> it was like, yeah, obviously it's Q. And when we got to Atlanta, we went for, uh, we went and got coffee and yeah. just, you know, cause you gotta, you gotta, you gotta develop a rapport with somebody before you, you work with them. If you're lucky, you get to, and, mm. and it just kind of fell into place from there. You know? It was like easy. Yeah. And then we worked together and it got better and better and better and better. Or like worse and worse and worse. And terrible and terrible. <laughs> just and terrible. weird. A chaotic, yeah. chaotic, chaotic yeah. pair on set. It was, it's so much fun, honestly. And just like to riff off of Noah and see him work and also like, just, you know, seeing you do your thing, man, and like stepping into this role was like so like, bomb. Oh, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Now, these are iconic characters to comic fans like myself. Like, I love this world, but they're not household names yet. So when you first heard about them, what were the archetypes that you were drawn to most that you really wanted to convey? Ooh. For me, as soon as I saw the breakdown, I was like, she's got to be a punk. Like, she has to be punk. I was listening to so much punk music, and I'm trying every single role I get. I'm like, make her punk. <laughs> and so, like, that was at the height of it. So I just, like, put on my bomber jacket, and I, like, sent my materials in. And when everything started to come together and we were doing the costume fittings, I was just like, yo, like, we have to, it's like a a canvas that has every single, it's like a Pollock. It's like every color you can imagine, every shape. And so that was just like so much fun. I hope I answered the question, I can't remember. I think you did. That totally translates. And that's the Burning Man vibe I was talking about. It's got that energy. There you that go. Michael Pollock. <laughs> yeah, flavor. Oh, Jason Pollock. Oh. Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, My, Jason, oh, you know, and Jackson Michael, Pollock. Michael, Michael, Michael you know, Pollock. DJ Pollock. My, DJ Pollock. Michael Pollock is the someone whole Pollock else. Pollock. Represented the Pollocks. But you know, what is it about that last name? It's just, it's got a little. So talented. It's got some, actually, a guy to go to Burning Man with is named Misha Pollock. Not even kidding. I yeah. go to Burning Man with a guy named Misha Pollock. There you oh, go. Well, that's <laughs> uh, archetype for you, anything you specifically were drawn to? I think, I think, uh, like the golden retrieval, golden retriever. I've said, I've done that since I was a boy, since I was like, <laughs> my R's go to L sometimes. Sick. <laughs> Real, dude. Golden retriever archetype, I think. I wanted, I wanted Adam Smasher to be that young, bright eyed, bushy tailed type uh, archetype of a human coming into a situation completely inexperienced. I mean, he doesn't even know how to use his powers mm -hmm. at the beginning of the film and really even maybe in the end, he barely <laughs> figures it out. And yeah, and also, you know, he comes from, from a, a network of his uncle was a superhero, his grandfather was a villain um, under precarious circumstances. And so I felt like it was important to have a little bit of privilege in there and a bit of maybe 
Maybe just a little bit of, you know, lack of experience and he comes from a bit of a bubble, you yeah. know, and coming into this and seeing Kondok for the first time. And I wanted that to be really eye-opening for him. Last question for you guys, because we're, we're in this age, this golden age of superheroes. Yeah. We grew up as they were already established and in this world. They're pretty well established in universe. What's it done to you mentally seeing superhero movies now that you've played them? Do you see like, oh, tights, oh, wire rigging. Has it changed your perspective? I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm wowed by them. Yeah. One way or another. The the amount, the Herculean task of, of making a superhero movie, I just have a profound respect for now. Yeah. And, and, and even deeper respect for, I think. It, like, from, like, the crews who, like, make them, mm -hmm. you know, and just, like, how passionate they are. Like, even, like, on our set, it was insane. You can see them with all, like, the gear of, like, the past projects they've done. And so it was just, like, such a, like, well-oiled and, like, passionate, like, machine all throughout, like, Atlanta. And then, like, seeing them on the screen, it's just like, yo, like, I love what they did with this theme or this, like, you know, this concept. And each one, like, you know, whether it's, you know, whichever, it's... They always have like a message that I think progressively gets more honest and honest as it moves on in the world. Um, and you know, I think Black Adam just like nestles itself like in all of that like so perfectly. Herculean task performed. Thank you for bringing characters I love to life. I appreciate it. Such great work guys, thank you. Thanks, cool. Thank you, man.